because he is worshipping the most wise, the one that nothing happens without his wisdom. So the human being should be always pleased with whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decree mm -hmm. for him. There's a purpose for it. If you are rich, you are under the test. People think that if you're rich, you're okay. No, you're not okay. Unless you fulfill and you pass this test. Yeah. You have to be grateful to the creator of the heavens and the earth. You use your wealth in the proper way to trust. And you have to be grateful to him. If you are poor, still a test. And the test is be patient. Seek the help from the creator of the heavens and the earth. Take the means, yes, the permissible means. But be patient and be pleased with his destiny. And know that this life, that's not the end of it. This life is connected to the hereafter. And everybody will be tested in this life. And accordingly, people will be, their affairs will be in the hereafter. So the heart, when it understands this, it becomes in a state of calmness. And it just takes the physical means, but it knows that everything is in the hands of Allah. The one that provides for a bird. What is a bird? How weak is a bird? Mm -hmm. And any bird that comes out in the morning, leaves its tree, comes back at night with full stomach. Who provided for her? It's the creator of the heavens and earth. Yeah. The Prophet ﷺ gave us this example. He said, لَوْ أَنَّكُمْ تَتَوَكَّلُونَ عَلَى اللَّهِ This is the key. If you put your trust in the creator of the heavens and the earth alone, truly, and you take the means of course, but your heart fully trusting the creator of the heavens and the earth, what would happen to you? He would provide for you like he would provide for the bird. Comes out in the morning empty stomach, comes back at night full stomach. This bird is not panicking, but it's not staying in one tree. It's going from one tree to the other, taking the means. But the heart is settled and calmed that it would never come back at night with an empty stomach. It would be provided for because it, she, it, that, that bird knows that the creator of the heavens and earth would never forget about her. And this is a bird that the, the heavens and the earth is not created for the bird. The heavens and earth is created for the human being. So the human being would never be forgotten. But it's the problem is in the human being. They, put the, they do not put their trust in the creator of the heavens and the earth. They do not obey him in the sense that Allah says in the Quran, Whoever obeys Allah, be dutiful to him, Allah will make ways out for that purpose and he would, for, would provide for him, make ways out for that person and would provide for him from ways that he does not expect. This is the words of the creator of the heavens and earth and never been proven to be wrong. Tell us, Sheikh, if someone feels that, you know what, God Almighty, the creator, Allah, he loves me because I've got the Rolex, I've got the Mercedes and I keep rising in status at my work. So he feels blessed now that the creator is blessing me. And he says, you know what, you're still driving a cab because you got the wrong belief. And the creator ain't giving you nothing. That's why you're, you know, it's just a proof that you're on the wrong way because you're poor. Look at me. I'm loaded. I got the JC Gold card. I got the bank accounts full. So this person feels like this is the love of his creator because he's just rolling in abundance. Uh, what Allah, do we got to say about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran corrected this misunderstanding because it's present in the human being. Mm -hmm. In many verses, one of which it says, Your wealth, your families are not the ones that would get you closer to, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's what your actions are. And he gave us the example of Qarun, the cousin of Moses. I'm not sure exactly what's Qarun, his name was in English. Mm -hmm. But he had so much wealth that the Quran says that the keys for his treasures, the strong men were not able to carry the keys. Mm -hmm. Not the treasures, the keys. So that's more than Bill Gates and Donald uh, Trump it's, together. It's an amazing <laughs> amount of money, right? Yeah. And he says in the Quran that he was boastful like this. And he says, this is a sign that, you know, God is pleased with me and he forgot about his creator and so on. Then all of a sudden, in the blink of an eye, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destroyed all of his wealth. And while he was going out into the in front of the people, the weak ones would say, we wish that we have like what Qarun has. Right? And then when everything is finished, you know, they said, we wish that we knew that the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in things. So it does not work by how much wealth a person has because this is not the life mm -hmm. that we would live on it forever. Everything a person will be asked about in the hereafter. The real happiness, the real success, the real richness is when a person enters the paradise that Allah created for the believers. And the real loss is when a person is thrown into the hellfire. Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu said a statement which mm -hmm. means there is no goodness in a goodness that would lead you to the fire. And there is no evil in an evil that would lead you to your goodness. But of course, the obedience of Allah is not evil. But the point is, if a person is patient in the orders of Allah and that lead you to the everlasting happiness, 
That means this is the great thing. And that's why we do not promise people anything of this dunya, of this world. Mm -hmm. Prophet ﷺ, when he takes the pledges from the companions, he did not tell them you'll have the mansions and the palaces and all that. He told them, if you believe in the creator of the heavens and the earth, he will give you Jannah, paradise. And they accepted it and they submitted themselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When this was their goal, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opened the treasures for them on this earth and they became the rulers of the land. But not the goal to be like that. The goal is to seek the pleasure of the creator of the heavens and earth. Now you have some people taking the means, but these means to acquiring wealth, they seem so tied up into the material world that they're forgetting about some of their obligations. They feel like, you know what, if I don't take the means, then I'm not going to make this money. So they will be missing the prayer, late for the prayer, maybe not making the prayer at all. They might not be paying the charity. And it reminds me of a, a verse from the verbatim word of God. Maybe if this is interlinked at all, and you can mm -hmm. give us the, the um, explanation of it, where the Creator is saying that shaitan, the devil, mm -hmm. that he promises you poverty right. and orders you to commit evil deeds. Right. Allah promises you his forgiveness and his great bounty. Right. Can, how do you tie these together and can you explain right. this? This is exactly what the deception of the human being in if they do not follow the revelation from Allah. Mm -hmm. The verse says that the shaitan, as you said, he promises you poverty. Shaitan, the devil, would never come to a person and tell him, or oh, do this so that you become poor. Yeah. That's, it's very clear. Yeah. He promises poverty by what? By telling them to uh, not to give in charity, not to give for the sake of Allah. And this is in itself is poverty because the barakah, the blessings of one's wealth, be, be taken away. And so he promises people what they want to hear, but in reality, this is the real poverty because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's rules and laws are different what the human beings are seeing under their feet. Human being as if he's looking under his feet and that's it. If he looks ahead, you know, he would see the matter totally different. Mm -hmm. And this is the difference between the believers and the non-believers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, out of his mercy, he gave us these types of rules on the face of earth. You fear Allah, you're dutiful to him, you obey him, he would make ways out for you. He would provide for you. Who would understand this? Not the disbelievers, the believers. So they would take this as a mean, with the physical means. So the time for the salah comes, and a person is about to make a million dollar uh, deal here, but the call is from my creator, the one that provides for me, the one that owns this million and owes whatever that exists. Did you say a million? Even billions, <laughs> right? <laughs> right. He would turn to the creator of the heavens and the earth alone, yeah. knowing that he's the provider. He would provide for him and he would bless his wealth for him because he is the one that is owning everything that is, exists. And that's the, what I'm saying, the two set of means, only the believers would understand it. And when there is conflict between both, they put forward the means that is mentioned in the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet. I want to drive this point home because you said blessed. So by doing, establishing the prayer, worshiping your Creator alone, trying to abide every day, by what he's told you to do, then your life is blessed. Right. But on the other hand, you don't have the blessings if you're not praying, if you're not doing what he told you to do. Right. And the word blessings or baraka means that you have a goodness came to you. Yeah. Money, whatever, health. You know, everybody get, gets that. But the ones that are blessed is when this goodness stays with you. Yeah. And brings goodness for you and your heart is in a good state and it stays with you. But if you get a whole bunch and then you lose it all of a sudden, and then your heart does not have that state of in which it will have this calmness in it, what is the goodness of what you have? So this blessings in one's life, you can hit by something that you would lose more and more money, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protects you as a result of you being steadfast. The religion of Islam, and this is something that people need to understand, it's not about just a matter of one prayer here or there, it's the whole life, economy, politics, uh, mannerism, uh, worship, beliefs, everything that is a word of Allah, that is order from Allah, so that the whole life of the human beings will be accordingly happiness in this life and in the hereafter. It's a complete way of life. Complete way of life. How can we get the people to see that this is not something frivolous, this is not something trivial, I mean the importance, because I come across a lot of people that they feel that it's more important to, well, there's nothing wrong with getting a degree in school, this is encouraged, but they feel like they will sit through all the classes and get all the credits so they can get this big stat, you know, the, the degree finished, but when it comes down to the prayer, let's say, this basic thing that you have to do, you just can't get them to do it for the life of you. Because people are mixing the means and the goals. What is the goal of our life? You get the degrees, you get the wealth, you get the highest level on the face of earth, then what? 
When you go to the grave, you're not going to take anything with that with you. Mm -hmm. Does that mean that we leave all of these things? No, we do all of these.